The second derivative test gives us a simple way to classify a point at a horizontal tangent by considering if the function is concave up at that point or concave down. If the function is concave up, then the point in question must be a minimum. It's like it's at the bottom of a valley. But if the function is concave down, then the point would be a maximum at the top of a sort of peak or mountain. To determine the concavity of a function at a point, we use the second derivative, which is why this is called the second derivative test. We'll go over what the second derivative test is and then do an example of applying it. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson where we prove the second derivative test. We prove that this is all true. All right. Let f be a function such that f prime of c equals zero. So c is a point where there is a horizontal tangent. The derivative is equal to zero. And the second derivative of f exists on an open interval containing c. So there has to be some space around this point c where the function is twice differentiable. Then, if f double prime of c, the second derivative of the function evaluated at c, is positive, then f has a relative minimum at the point c, f of c. So x equals c, in this case, is the location of a relative minimum, that relative minimum being f of c. Now, the second derivative being positive means that the rate of change of the first derivative is positive. So the derivatives are actually getting bigger. We can see that in this example where the second derivative is positive. What's happening is that the first derivative, the slopes of these tangent lines, is going from negative to less negative and less negative and then finally zero, and then it's actually getting positive. So those first derivative slopes, I've drawn them here to be a little exaggerated just so you can kind of see the trend, they are getting bigger. And that's what causes this sort of valley shape where we get that relative minimum. Similarly, if f double prime of c, the second derivative evaluated at c, is negative, then f has a relative maximum at the point c, f of c. So in that case, x equals c is a location of a relative maximum, and that maximum is f of c. And you can see that in this picture here, where the second derivative is negative. In this situation, the rate of change of the first derivative is negative. So the derivatives are going from positive to getting less positive until eventually they're zero, and then they actually start to get negative. And that creates this mountain shape where we have the location of a maximum. Finally, if the second derivative of f at c is zero, in this case, the test is inconclusive, and we would have to use the first derivative test in order to classify the point. Let's do a quick example applying the second derivative test to find the relative extrema of f of x equals negative three x to the five plus 5x cubed. In order to find the relative extrema, we need to begin by finding the critical points of the function. Thus, we will take the derivative, and remember the critical points are the points where the function's derivative is either zero or undefined. Now, when we take the derivative, we just need to use the power rule, which gives us a derivative of negative 15x to the 4 plus 15x squared. We can factor a 15x squared out of both terms, and that's going to give us 15x squared multiplied by negative x squared plus 1. So the critical numbers, I'm calling them critical numbers because we're just going to find the x-coordinates right now. The critical numbers are the x-coordinates that make this derivative equal to 0. Now, to make the derivative equal 0, we need to make this factor 0, or this factor, zero. To make 15x squared equal zero, we of course just need to set x equal to zero. To make negative x squared plus one equal to zero, we need negative x squared to equal negative one, so that these would add to zero. And negative x squared will equal negative one, if x is plus or minus one. So these are the three critical numbers, zero, one, and negative one. Now to use the second derivative test in order to classify these critical numbers, we're going to need to find the second derivative. So let's look at this unfactored form of the first derivative since it's 
easier to differentiate. The second derivative would be negative 60x to the 3 plus 30x to the 1. And then we could factor 30x out of this, giving us 30x multiplied by negative 2x squared plus 1. That is our second derivative. We can now use this to classify the critical numbers. And here is a cute table to help us do that. These are the critical points that result from plugging these critical numbers into the function f of x. Now we need to look at each of these points and assess the sign of the second derivative at these x coordinates, beginning with negative 1, negative 2. If we plug negative 1 into this second derivative, we get negative 30 multiplied by negative 2 plus 1. This will be a negative times a negative, and thus the sign of the second derivative at this point is positive, which means we've got a concave up part of the function. Thus, we have a relative minimum at negative 1, negative 2. So I'll just write rel min for relative minimum. Now we can move on to the next point, positive 1, positive 2. So we'll plug that x coordinate of positive 1 into the second derivative. That's going to give us 30 multiplied by negative 2 plus 1. You can see this will be a positive times a negative, and thus the sign of the second derivative here is negative, which means the function is concave down here. And thus, at 1, 2, we have a relative maximum. So I'll write rel max. Finally, 0, 0. If we plug x equals 0 into the second derivative, this is going to be 0, which is going to make the whole thing equal 0. So here, the second derivative equals 0, and thus the second derivative test is inconclusive. So we'll have to bust out the first derivative test in order to classify this point. To conduct a first derivative test, something called a sign chart is often useful. Just a little number line where we sketch our critical numbers. Our critical numbers are negative 1, 0, and 1. We're trying to classify the point at x equals 0. So we want to look at this interval before 0 and this interval after 0. In each case, we need to see if the function is increasing or decreasing by looking at the first derivative. A simple way to evaluate the function's behavior on one of these intervals is to just take a sample point from the interval and plug it into the first derivative. If we take, for example, negative 1 half, and plug that into the first derivative, we are going to get a positive number, which means the function must be increasing on this whole interval from negative 1 to 0. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on the first derivative test if you need a more thorough review. We then look at this interval after 0. If we plug 1 half, for example, as a sample point in the interval, if we plug that into the derivative, the first derivative, we will get a positive number. So the function is also increasing after zero. Thus, since the sign of the derivative is the same on either side of this critical number, the point zero, zero is neither a maximum nor a minimum. Let's take a quick look at a picture of what this function actually looks like now. There it is. This figure is from Larson's calculus, and you can see how its shape agrees with our analysis. At x equals negative one, we have a relative minimum. The function is concave up there. There. At x equals positive 1, we have a relative maximum. The function is concave down. But at 0, 0, you can see the function is increasing to the left and it's increasing to the right. So in fact, that point at 0, 0 is neither a relative minimum nor a relative maximum, even though we do have a horizontal tangent there. So there's an example, and that is a quick overview of the second derivative test. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. <laughs>